era tusima katonda kuluruo gwasobodde okwewayo newe gulire banga okutuuliriza and we thank god for you that has opened up yourself and you bought yourself some time to listen to us cha muwendo nyo kubanga okukiriza kuva mukulira it is very precious because faith comes by hearing Msajjo mu muandisi we bimu kubitabo bible byeite byamagezi One man who is a great writer of one of the books the bible calls the book of wisdom We are ya yogera ku feza no kuyiga yali awa abana be amagezi nabagamba mulonde wo kuyiga When he was speaking of gold and learning he told his children choose learning Echo kiri mu ngere sura munana no runyirirwe 10 That is in Proverbs chapter 8 verse 10. Nono kabaka Sulumani. Even King Solomon. Ah ah, ono kabaka Sulumani. Bwedoza. This is King Solomon I think. Ye yawandi ke bigambo bino. Who wrote these words? Yali mugezi. He was wise. Era yo mu kubantu katonda be yakoze so muri mu munene mu bwaka baka bwaka tonda mu bisere ebyo. And he's one of the men God used great to do great works for the kingdom in those days. Yachimanya anti ensibuko yobuwangus. He understood that the origin of victory elimukutula wansi no igirizibwa. Is in sitting down and you be trained. Era yachitwalanga nga chikulu echeta age chikulu mulambo omuntu kutula wansi no igirizibwa. And he took it a very important necessity in the life of someone to sit down and be taught. Yensonga rwachi nebaziza abantu abaino mu chitimo go guyayanira okuyiga obutakoa. That's why I have thanked people that have a heart of learning and ending me. Okuyigirizibwa kuongera ko. Being taught adds on you. Boko wo kuyiga otolwa ko kumanya. When you get tired of listening your your learning is reduced. Obange chidiba. You like a pond. Echitaina nsulo. Without springs. Ngachirimu amazi. Yet it has water. Tega kulukuta. And the water doesn't flow. Atoru sigenza no kubaga kulukuta. And sometimes it flows. Na inga techiingiza. Yet it has no inlet. Chituke chisera ne chikala. A time reaches and it dries up. At which to treat against sulo. That's why we need springs. Okwegulawo emitima jafu okuberanga gifuno okuyigirizibwa To open up so that our hearts get some teaching Era ne nsuroza fezo zireme kaliranga So that our strings our springs never run dry Emu principle oba ekisanyize ekisoke eri omuwereza One of the principles or the first necessity of a minister Anakola emuli memnene mwaka bakaba katonda Who will do great works in the kingdom of God? Gwe mutimo go ogutako akuyigirizibwa. Is a heart that never gets tired of learning. Teri muntu amanyi byonna. There is no one who knows it all. Tuyigira kubanna fe. We learn from others. Ewan kubadengo moyo mtukuvu yavunanyizibwa kutuyigirizibwa. Tuyigiriza. Even though it's the Holy Spirit that is responsible for teaching us. Singa moyo mtukuvu yali atutukirira buterevu. If the, if the Holy Spirit would approach us directly and that was enough there wouldn't be the fivefold ministries no buwereza obulala bwe baita service gift and the other ministry called service gift ebobusangibwa mu kitabo kyabalumye sura 12 That is found in the book of Romans chapter 12 era te wandi baddewo na bilabo bilala And there wouldn't be other gifts. Through which the Holy Spirit manifests as so, he does his work. Chikuru, so being taught is very important. To, to someone whom God is going to use to do great works for the kingdom. Because katonda kuteka kumanya konna mulundi gumune kujamu because my head or my brain is a very small container where the lord cannot put all the knowledge and it fits chovola banti katonda mugezi that's why god is very wise mumuntu yakola mu busenge mwatereka ebimugasa 
In man he made rooms where he keeps what is important. Atera yateka wo enziji mwafurumize bitagasa. He also put doors where unnecessary things are let out. Na atera wali wo nenziruji olubo olugule okuyingize bipya. But there is there's also another door that is open to let in new things. Kati ba mwaka fana nyinga gweto yagala kuyiga. So imagine if for you you don't want to learn. Orujjo rufurumye bikadde bitacha akola mulembo ogonga gufurumya. The door that lets out the old is letting out. Ate orujjo lulala na yogedde nzigi satu munzijuki zanti obongo buko wa mangu. Yet the door that lets in. Oruyingiza ro lugale. Yet the door that lets in is closed. Katate runo rufurumya ro lugule. Yet the door that lets out is open. So imagine. You will let out. And you may let out and you find yourself empty. Or you find yourself stuck in the old things. You're not moving on. So it is very difficult for such a person to walk the journey of transformation. Because transformation starts with being taught, then you struggle and you know the truth and then you make it the way of life. Amen. Amen. Whenever you know the truth and you put it in action, and it becomes your way of life. The people that watch you. They start seeing you as a new creature because the old is out and you've started taking in the new. That's why Solomon says this. Probably he was speaking to his children, other people he was leading. But it is a voice of a parent. It is a voice of a leader. Proverbs chapter 8 verse 10. Receive my instruction and not silver. No kumanya okuchira zabu enonde. And knowledge rather than choice gold. Gold and silver are representing wealth. So Solomon, being it that he was very wise, he understood what brings wealth. He understood that being taught brings you knowledge of how to acquire wealth. And it brings you wisdom to keep yourself in that wealth and to keep that wealth. Amen. Verse 11. For wisdom is better than rubies. And all the things one may desire cannot be compared with her. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and I find out knowledge and discretion. Do you hear what, what wisdom teaches? The Baganda say you're only wise if you're told. And the Bible says faith comes by hearing. The other verse that I want to add is here. The counsel that is given unto us to take teaching is very important. Verse 38, hear instruction and be wise and do not disdain it. Hear instruction and be wise. 
engeri jokola mwe bintu mu butufu bwacho kati bo bikola mu ngeri entufu enungam abakulaba ne bagaba musajjoyo mukazoyo mugezi Getting instructions help you to know how to do things in the right way and when you do them the right way those that see you say that man is wise that lady is very wise Esure yo mwenda olunyiriro omwenda era kunsongeyo Chapter 9 verse 9 on the same issue Girizangu wa mageza ne yongerango okubana amagezi Give instruction to a wise and he will still be wiser Yigirizango mutukirivu ne yongerango okuyita ebigezo Teach a just man and he will increase in learning. So receiving instructions adds unto us value. Amen. Amen. So no when songe unjagala guari kumukutu obe ko muntu gojukiza nti okuyiga kuta andise. Ainzo kuba yaba de eravide. For that reason, you that is online, I want you to remind someone that the learning has started. They may have forgotten. Gabana kasera kana karunji na yemwa garize. Share this precious time with them. Wish them well. Tugenze mchitavo cha nekemea wetu hata andikidenga. Tuyigira kunekemea ngeriji ya kola momulimu kwa katondo mnene. We are back to the book of Nehemiah where we started from. Learning from Nehemiah how he did the great work of God. Tuwako mye kuru nyiri liruwe kumi no musambu. We stopped on verse 17. Uruwa baderu gamba antia onemba gamba antimula babwe tuli obubi. Yerusalimu bwe chizise nenziji. Zacho, zoke duomulido, mujetu zimbebu gwe wa Yerusalimi, tulemoku bako na te echivume. Then I say to them, you see the distress that we are in, how Jerusalem lies west, and its gates are burned with fire. Come Kaka, and let us build the wall of Jerusalem. Kati awo naba suviza na mba gawe, tuko mienja kutandi kira awo, okuzimba timu. And then I promised you that where we've ended, I'll start from there to build a team. To teach you how to build a team. I have some little experience in that. Originating from the ministry of DDM. You cannot do a great work when you are alone. Mugezi. God is wise. Nabagambi enti mubuongo wafe, oba mubula mubu wafe, tuli contain antono, katonda tasobola kudira busobo zibu wa katonda wona, na abu teka mumu ntu omu. Ayabika. I told you that our life is a small container, so God cannot get all the divine ability and put it in one person. You may bust. Tosobola. You cannot. Erabu sangango mtu alo akugama anti ya manyibi ona, omanyanga anti akulimba. So if you ever meet someone who says they know it all, just know they are lying. So katonda ya chimanyanti tetuina busobo zibu sobola kubera terekero liyo busobo zibu wa katonda wana mufe. So God understood that we have no ability to contain all divine ability within us. Na agenda nga agabanya ebidabo no busobo zobu enja ulo mukontaina beba antwabe enja ulo. So he went on dividing the divine ability, that is the gift in containers, that is different people. Akatecho, chitegeza, ntibuli muntu ye nakatonda ya muteka mu dipositi yobu sobo zobu enja ulo kumulala. That simply means that for every person, they have a different ability from another person. Katika tonda wa ito mkulembeze. So when God calls a leader, akuwe chiroto chinene, he gives him a very big dream. Na kuwa ngamanyenti gwa kuwa de office mu. And he knows he has given you one office. Omuri obusobo zibo. Where your ability is. Ori mkulembeze. You are a leader. Ogenda kurunga miyawa no okulawa ngamukolo omuri momu neno ugo nga katonda wa agwa agala. You are going to lead your your colleagues in in how to do this big work the when, way God wants it. When I didn't turn the cover where is our David's discipleship ministry? When I was starting the ministry of David's discipleship ministry, the never nang we try to understand the value of much research we try to understand that we try to to many new where is our bugenda kubeda. I together with the colleagues I started with, we didn't know how the ministry was going to be. Chiro was a chat and ikira munze. It was a, a thought that started within me. Ne tufuna group we so mesebwa nemba yingizamwe chochenali mplida. 
we got a group to be taught and I put into them what I was feeling. Mukama nampa magezi rokuba bwali buweleza bwa kusomesa okufuna yo abalala bana benesigisa omulimu gwegumu tusomese nga wamu. And God gave me the wisdom to since it was about teaching to get other four people to trust them with what we have to teach to other people. Era mukutandi ko mwaka gwa fogusoka abantu abo nalondo oluchiko kuva mu bayizi benasomesanga benalaba kusinzira ku busobozo bwenja bulo bwe twawangana amagezi okulaba nga tutandika obweleza bugende mu maso. And starting that year I picked from the first students that I taught the ones we used to encourage each other with and I gave them the responsibility so that we can take the ministry forward. What did God do for me? I remember the word that came to me as I started. It said, I'm going to bring people to you. And some will not look to be profitable. But it is your responsibility to prepare them so that they can profit. Because God knew that what he had called me to do was great for me to do it alone. And I don't have the experience and the ability to do that whole work alone. And he knew that he had other people in whom he had put this ability to do this work as it keeps on growing. I I have seen that working together as a team, God does great work. And I have discovered that there are people who work under your leadership who can do things that you cannot do. So it's the responsibility of a leader whom God has called and entrusted with a big dream that will yield a great work, God is going to bring people under you. The first step when those people come, this is what Nehemiah has done in, in just seven Then I say to them, you see the distress we are in? so that they can also see the need. Why this ministry or that project is being started. You be very open and very understandable. Let me give you counsel. What we are teaching is not only for church. It's not only to benefit you only in church or only in church ministry. It can help you to take your house forward. It can help you to take your business forward. Mageza gasoboro kuyamba kutukiriza kampaniyo ekiroto chochorina mu kampani omulimo ogogota ndise It is wisdom that it can help you to take your dream the dream of your company ahead Ah mu bulamu bwange na kitegera anti amanyi go mukulembeze ga muri mu team ye In my in my life I have understood that the strength of a leader is in his team Aba kulembeza abana bulijjo bati okuyimusa abantu Weak leaders always fear to lift up other people. A strong leader never fears to lift up another person. So we are back. The first stage, this one had to first inform the people that came in his presence first. Nehemiah had to be very clear. 
Whatever he was speaking about had to be very clear. Whatever he was speaking about had to be very clear. Atera yari ateko kubera nga chayogera ko chiriko busembi bwa katonda. He also had to be speaking about something that has the seconding of God. Abantu bano baino kusokwa okulira nekemeya endoza ye bajigule nga tebana ba kuyingira kufuka bakoza awamu na ye. These people had to first listen to Nehemiah's thinking and buy his idea before they become part of him. They had to see it and consider it that there is a need. The same verse has another part. Kwe kubanti bali bate geranti echizibwecho techikoma bukomi kukuleta nsonyi na chivume eriba antubalibo kaba asigarayo na ene guanga lionangeli ya isirairi liali rivumibwa. Which is that they had to understand that this problem was not only bringing shame to the people that had remained in Jerusalem but the whole tribe of Israel was being ashamed. Baino chite geranti chizibu echiziba zingira wamu. They had to understand that it is a problem that concerns all of them. When a problem becomes a common problem, then it means you have to work together to fight that problem. The other thing which we did, understanding that someone was created with fear, these were people of God and the work he had come to do was of God. They had to have confirmation that God is together with them. That is verse 18. Every time you want people to join you, have the confirmation and the testimony that it is God that has called you to do the work that you're going to do. Remember that and I told them of the hand of my God which had been upon me and also of the king's word that he had spoken to me so they said let us rise up and build then they set their hands to do this good work this word that you've had let us rise up and build that word. Is a sign that they have been convinced by the words Nehemiah has told them. So do you know what is there? They, they have the same perception. They are seeing the same things. That is what God usually does. If God is to add unto you people to work with, number one, the first thing, agenda kuleta abantu mchitabo chokuwa esula ya kuna. He's going to bring people in Exodus chapter four. Buabale tata genda babu lida chichi cha buabale tedokola. And when he brings them, he will not tell them what they have come to do. Urunyiruwa bimo msanvo. Verse 27. Mukama na gambaloni intigenda mudungo musinka ne musa na agenda na mulaba kurusozi wa katonda na mnyuegera. And the Lord said to Aaron, go into the wilderness to meet Moses. So he went and met him on the mountain of God and kissed him. Jukira musure yokuna musa ainobu na fobula wikidemu ye. Remember in that same verse, this same chapter, Moses has a, a weakness that has come out of him. Alonze. And it is him that God has chosen. He's the one being sent to Pharaoh Amugambe. to tell him to leave the Israelites go and worship their God. But the problem 
Musa anana agira. Moses Tamas. Atebu wele za wako ogera. Yet it is a ministry of speaking. Tasobola kufuru miyabi gambo nebitegele kikaburu njeri kabaka. He cannot bring out words that are clear to the king. Atebu evita ategele keke vidya kule terokubusa busa Musa. Yet when they are not understood, Moses would be doubted. Ah ah. Kabaka ya kubusa busa evi gambo biya Musa. The king will doubt the words of Moses. So God is very wise. He understood Moses' weakness. And told Aaron in secret. Go and meet Moses. God did not tell Aaron. What he wants him to do for him. In verse 28. So Moses told Aaron all the words of the Lord who had sent him and all the signs which he had commanded him. What God has done and it's what he does even in this generation. He brings people when they have different abilities, it is the responsibility of the leader to see the ability in that person and you trust them with some responsibility. What Moses has done, he has taken the responsibility to explain to Aaron what God wants them to do for him. So I want you to In see. In verse 29. Aaron, then Moses and Aaron went and gathered together all elders of the children of Israel. I want you to consider the long ago men how they were able to do great works for God. In chapter 2, there was a relationship between God and the children of Israel. The idea of Moses' work started from there in God's heart. In chapter 3, God reveals himself and introduces himself to Moses. He shows him the current problem and the present need. Then later he sends him and he tells him in verse 8 of chapter 3 Behold I descend I have descended, which means I've come down from heaven to rescue the children of Israel from Egypt. That confirms that this work was for God to do it. Then he says in verse 9, but I told you that in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 9, we are co-workers together with God. Do you see the organization in chapter 8? In verse 8. In verse 10. Come now, therefore I will send you to Pharaoh. That you may bring my people out, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Verse 8 said, So I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians. So you can see God is, you may think God is going there directly, but he gets a partner. Musa. Moses. Who goes in God's name. So in team we see God. Musa. We see Moses, the one bearing the vision. We see Aaron, Moses' partner. In chapter 4, verse 29, we see 
We also see the elders of Israel. They haven't given us the number. What have you started seeing now? We see a great work. The work that has to be done. Delivering the children of Israel out of Egypt needs a team. I'm teaching that one who has a big dream. One who wants to do great things. No one has the ability to do great things if you do everything on your own. So what makes people fail? Failure begins when people who have big dreams start thinking they can do everything on their own. So let's see how the operation goes on in verse 30. Alone in Ayogera, Ebigambe, Vivio Namukama, Weyamutuma, Musa, Nakoro Bonero, Mumaso Gabant. And Aaron spoke all the words which the Lord had spoken to Moses, and then he did the signs in the sight of the people. Aaron, Aaron speaks. Musa Moses does the signs. And people were convinced. Everybody needs another. For the home to go ahead and develop, Please fight that problem in the home together. Let's grow with a heart that wants to work together as a team. In that heart, people in the team, none should be saying, I'm not concerned. We are back to Nehemiah chapter 2. We saw that after being explained to the elders of Israel, the officials of Israel had all accepted. Willingly, and they said this. Let us arise and build. Then they set their hands to do this good work. Because we are you must have explained to them very well, you the head of the family, you the vision bearer, for these workers to do a great work. You must have explained to them and they understand. Your words will create within them a heart of courage. And what will, and what will make them to offer themselves with dedication is to have the confirmation in their hearts that the work they are going to get themselves involved in is good. But if you fail to explain to them and convince them that the work you are going to do with them is good, they will not take the responsibility to be far. Someone only determines and gives themselves into something they know that is good. Chigasa. It is beneficial. Chamakuru. It is useful. Yomumaso. And it takes them forward. That all is a responsibility of the one whom God gave a great dream. I have not yet started teaching the partners, the team members whom the Lord has brought to work with the In verse 19 of chapter 2, still on the theme that how do we do great things in the kingdom of God? What you heard, they set their hands together. 
Abantu banji bale meduo kuweleza katonda. Era batandi seko ne bako mamukubo kubanga batitizi. Many people have failed to serve God and they have started and ended halfway because they are cowards. People who do great things. They may be small. Yet inside them their hearts are big. They are courageous. They are determined. They don't fear to confront. Do you want God to use you to do great things? You need to determine. How do you start it? Just like other people, Joshua was like any other person. He took up responsibility that was bigger than him. And he thought that but when God considered him, he realized that Joshua had the ability to take forth the dream that God had started with Moses. But he also knew, after seeing the challenges that Moses had gone through, that Joshua himself was scared. Amen. Amen. That's why God tells him. Let us read there because we are in Joshua chapter 1. I decided to teach you this week how you can do great work for the kingdom of God. It's up to you who is yearning for God to do through you great works to take the responsibility and learn. In verse 5 of chapter 1. Let us begin from where the story begins and get involved. From the first verse of the book of Joshua. The Bible says, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over to this Jordan, you and all these people, to the land which I'm giving to them, the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread, upon it I have given you, as I said to Moses. So I want you to consider keenly this word. When Moses was starting to serve God in the mission of rescuing the children of Israel, God spoke some things to him. And as Joshua is beginning, God is speaking something to him. For every person who is used of God to do great work, because we have understood that no one can do great work when they are alone. Yet I got team. You need a team. A take o kuera no bulamburukufu bwebi gambo katonda biamula gira. Oba bia yogera jari nga gendokta nikomulimuguno. That person has to have the depth and the whole detail of the words that God spoke to them when they were going to begin this work. Uchiraba Musaina Manya Yaina Katonda Biamugambe Olaba na ne Joswa Nae Katonda Ase Naya A Mugambe Bibi Muruniri Wok Satu Bweruba Deru Gamanti Mubulichfo Mwemunari Nyange Chigere Chamwen Chiba Wa Demwe Ngabwe Nabanga ne Musa. You realize that God said some words to Moses and even now to Joshua he's saying some words. As verse three says that every place the sole of your foot will tread upon 
I'll give it to you as I said to Moses. Because remember, Joshua has to take these children of Israel to inherit the land. And that was started by God. He was with Moses. Musa, Moses' life has ended. Mission, the mission is still ongoing. God still wants the work to be done. He comes back and reveals himself to Joshua officially. I love God so much. So this time around, Joshua is not just saying the God of Moses. He doesn't tell God, tells Moses. He doesn't say God Moses. He says God confirmed it to me. That wherever we shall trend, he has given it to us. He has heard him say. He has the confirmation that the way God was with Moses the people we need have to need to listen to this news. Don't come with old information. The God of Moses. God said to Moses. No, they now want to hear. Now the new leader. What is God telling you? Through you that leads us, what is God telling you? They want to be sure that God is with you. In verse 5. He didn't say that he no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Trusting God is built when you consider all the things God has spoken through you. As a leader, what you've heard for yourself when God is speaking to you. And you confirm that it is God who has spoken. It doesn't matter whether he sends other messengers to confirm what he has said. In verse 6, now this is everyone's responsibility. He said this. Be strong. And of good courage. For to these people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I saw to their fathers to give to them. God is telling Joshua because he saw as if he was scared. And he told him, no, be strong. I want to tell you, you that has a dream, you that has a calling upon your life, you that has an idea of a business, you yourself, your key to have the confirmation that you can do it. If you don't have the confirmation, now your colleagues, you're just gathering them in vain. It is very bad to have a leader that whenever he comes, they are crying. If you were a wife and you have a husband who is always crying, we pass through the other year, I don't know how we shall go through this, he's always complaining, no, that is bad. You need a leader who is confident, as if they slept with God, even if they slept with troubles. And if we, we built our 
our dream upon the foundation of God. I like someone who comes and says, God said. Kati, obugumu wa Joshua ina kubuja kubigambo muka mabuja yogede na bo. Now Joshua, na Joshua has to derive his strength from the words God has spoken unto him. I know kukiririza muka tonda. He has to believe in God. I know kwesi gaka tonda. He has to trust God. Ne yeza mu amana. And he encourages himself. Buliruwa sango chizibu. Every time he meets a challenge. Okabo soboro kaba. You can cry. But after crying, start encouraging yourself. Remember that the Lord never lies. When he promises, he fulfills. And you move forward. Because when God promises, he is faithful to fulfill. And he has the ability that is limitless. For he cannot be controlled. He is the one who has spoken. He is the one who has sent you. So it means he is behind you to back you and anything. So whenever you remember those words that God said wherever you set your foot I'll give to you. Let me ask if it's you. It means move forward. Because you have the confirmation that wherever you tread, the Lord has given you. Amen. If you were like my DDM students, I would enjoy so much. Because we are teaching them to learn and after they have learned they put into action so that they can be that which you want them to be. Let me give you another idea. In verse 7, God is coaching his minister. Only be strong and very courageous. Only first be strong. Never bother to confront a situation before you start believing in yourself. First believe that you can in your heart. Then you go with that thought that you can. Then you start the act of fulfilling. Now our strength where do we build it? Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you do not turn from it to the left or to the right that you may prosper wherever you go God supports his word God only supports his word because it represents his thoughts. Let us stop forcing God to support us in issues that do not concern him. Only involve God in what concerns him. This is what he's saying. That even if they have taught you to trust me, but I will only be with you. If whatever you arise to do, you do it in the line of my word, in the will of God. And it's not in your wisdom and your desires. There is an old man I teach with who says great words. He's called Elder Tazimbiwa, our friend who gives us joy. He taught us one time I learned a lot and I was very happy. 
He said some ministers. They are the ones who think what, of what to do for God. So, but they are not ready to do the will of God. When they see that God's will is hard, for them they look for something easy and they look for something to do for God. God is not in need that you devise for him means. He's not weak in thoughts. You're not wiser than God. Hello. Hello. Praise God. So far, so far your understanding is below his own. And all together, he has no need. Even if he had the need, what he needs is beyond your ability. He has the ability to fulfill his desires. Stop devising means for God. Determined to do what God wants. God is ready to support a person who falls in the category of doing God's will. But God is not ready to support a person who falls in the kama. To support someone to fulfill their desires, doing them in God's name. If it's about your plans of life as a person, God has no problem blessing you because He's your provider. When it comes to His work, do God's will. Let me give you four ways you can determine and know before you make a decision. How you can discern and know that this falls in the will of God. But people who mount to that level have renewed their minds and their wisdom renewed. Their ways and the way they do things is not like the world. They are ready to do the will of God. Because remember, there is a way the world operates. If you want to do anything under the foundation of the word of God, when a thought comes to you, you first ask yourself this. Is what I'm going to do acceptable before God? You first ask yourself that question. I love the Holy Spirit so much because he's there to remind us. When you start asking yourself like that, since you have the element of being corrected and you don't make mistakes, the Holy Spirit will come in very quickly to lead you, to guide you, and remind you. The first question I'm saying, ask yourself, is what I'm going to do acceptable before God? When God considers it and sees me doing it, will he see that I've done it in the right way? God's way. Another thing, this would have come first. Is what I'm going to do in the will of God? The third one. The other question you should ask yourself. 
chinko rwachino chengendo kola chirunji mumaso ga katonda is this act that i'm going to do good before god dala katonda chinobwa chitunulira sa waloga manti a waloganda msana chine chiko rwacharoze zo kola chirunji if God considers it and sees, he will say, what Brother Musana has decided to do is, is good. Katika ambi kujire mu order. So let me take them in order. Chigwa mkwa gara kwa katonda. Is it in the will of God? Chirunji mumaso ga katonda. Is it good before God? Chisa nyusa katonda. Does it marry God? Bono chikola china reto kuna kuwalira kuna kuwazo mtu. If you do it, will it grieve the Holy Spirit or it will make the Lord happy? And the last one? I brought it first, but it is the last one in order. Is it right? Is it acceptable? Before God? By the time you finish asking yourself these questions, the Holy Spirit will speak in your mind. And you understand whether what you're going to do is right or wrong. Whether it's acceptable or unacceptable. Whether it makes God happy or it makes him. Is it in the will of God or not? Hallelujah. Amen. Why am I struggling to teach you this? My heart yearns to prepare ministers for tomorrow. You cannot have a dream to build a temple that houses 3,000 people when you don't have a team to help you take this work forward. And when you have not awakened different ministries in the congregation to lead you, to help you as you lead the local church. If we fix our eyes on building to Zimbe Hall, Without preparing a team that will nurture these 3,000. Remember, we always have three services. If we sit 3,000 people in one service, it means we have 9,000 members every Sunday. 9,000. To get the 9,000, we need evangelism teams or via all platforms that can bring these souls to Christ. When I went to Israel, I think God took me so that I can learn one word. One Jewish man told me this. Always teach yourself to plan for a situation when it's still afar. He used an English word. Think ahead. Think ahead. The world is a mass. And you know Africans. We have a problem. For you to think of cooking, you have to first be hungry. When you get hungry, then you remember to go to the market and buy food. Then you remember to cook. For an African to wash clothes, they all have to first be completed and they have nothing to wear tomorrow then they remember to wash. That way is burdensome. Brethren, allow me to end here today. I'll start from there tomorrow. Amen. Amen.